Hi friends, I have a book for you all about the first Thanksgiving. It's called The First Thanksgiving by Linda Hayward and illustrated by James Whaling. This is a lot of information about what happened to the pilgrims when they came to America and why they had to come to America. So this is all about the first Thanksgiving. Plymouth, England. 1620. Well, our year right now is 2020, so that was 400 years ago. A ship is in the harbor taking on passengers. The people going aboard seem too poor and too ordinary to ever be famous, and yet their names are now in history books. Are now in history books. Now, almost 400 years later, we still tell their story. These are the people we call the Pilgrims. They are about to sail to a strange new land called America. They've been warned that Native Americans may attack them. Even the voyage, the trip over, will be dangerous. There may be pirates or hurricanes. Many a ship has sailed off and never been seen again. The Pilgrims are risking their lives. But why? It started with the king. The king declared that everyone must belong to his religion. The pilgrims wanted their own religion. They tried meeting in secret. But the king sent spies to watch their houses. He sent soldiers to arrest their leaders. Even their neighbors turned against them. So the pilgrims decided to leave England. Now at last they are on the ship that will take them across the ocean, the Mayflower. Other people have joined them. Everyone hopes for a better life in America. They have given up their houses. They have said goodbye to their friends. They have said goodbye to England too. The Mayflower is on its way. The ship is crowded. There are 102 passengers in all. Most of them must stay in one stuffy place underneath the boat. It is cold and damp. That means wet. There is no water for washing, no toilet. Every day the pilgrims eat the same meal. Pickled beef, cheese, and dry hard bread. Some of the bread is full of worms. Even the water tastes bad. Halfway across the ocean, the Mayflower is hit by terrible storms. Week after week, huge waves crash across the deck. It seems as if the small ship will break in two. But the Mayflower is still floating after nine long weeks at sea. One morning, a lookout spots a dark speck ahead. Land! What a thrilling sight! They have reached their new home. The ship gets closer. The pilgrims see a sandy beach and many trees. America looks wild and strange. Is it safe? Are Native Americans hiding in the forest? A search party goes on to the land. The men walk along for miles and miles. Suddenly they see Native Americans, but the Native Americans are frightened and run away. The men keep exploring. They find wonderful things. Corn, baskets, a spring. They take fresh water back to the ship. How sweet it tastes. Now the pilgrims must choose a good place to live. A place with a harbor, that's a place by the water, and fresh water and fields for planting. At last they find the perfect spot. Here a brook, which is like a little river, flows into the harbor. A big rock marks the landing. They will call this New Plymouth. The pilgrims begin a new life in a new land. There is so much to do. They must build houses before they can leave the ship. But it is winter. Bad weather slows them down. It takes weeks to finish just one house. And there is hardly enough to eat. The pilgrims survive on food from the ship, roots, wild birds, and shellfish. How they wish for a dish of pudding and a slice of beef.
On a nearby hill, the pilgrims make a platform for their cannons. They know the Native Americans are watching them. They can see smoke from their campfires. They can hear them in the woods. A guard is posted day and night. How hard that first winter is. Every day is very cold. Fierce icy winds rip through the settlement. Freezing rain falls for hours. The pilgrims huddle together by their fires. They feel miserable and so alone. Almost everyone gets sick. Many people die. The small pilgrim band gets smaller and smaller. By the end of the winter, only half of the pilgrims are still alive. The pilgrims bury the dead at night in secret graves. The Native Americans must not know how few pilgrims are left and how weak those few are left. The long, sad winter passes and spring arrives. Native Americans are seen nearby. They come closer and closer. Then one day, a Native American walks right into the settlement. The children are scared, but the Native American smiles and says, Welcome. His name is Samoset. He speaks English. He learned it from sea captains. The pilgrims ask Samoset many questions. They give him presents. They want to trust this friendly Native American. Samoset comes back with a Native American named Squanto. Squanto speaks even better English. He likes the pilgrims and he decides to live with them. He shows them how to survive in the wilderness, how to hunt for deer, and where to find berries and herbs. He also shows them how to plant corn the Native American way. The Native Americans put fish in the ground when they plant their seeds. The fish makes the soil richer. The pilgrims want to make friends with all their Native American neighbors. Squanto and Samoset tell them about an Indian king called Massasoit. He is a great and wise leader. Massasoit comes to visit Pl Plymouth. The pilgrim governor bows and kisses the Native American king's hand. Massasoit bows and kisses the governor's hand. Then they talk together. A treaty is made that's like a promise. The pilgrims and the Native Americans will not hurt each other. There will be peace. The Native American leader draws his sign. The governor writes his name. This promise is kept for 54 years. In April, the Mayflower sails back to England. The pilgrims are sad to see it leave, but not one of them leaves with it. They all want to stay in America. The pilgrims work hard all summer. In the fall, the fields are full of good things to eat. It is a time of plenty for the pilgrims. How thankful they are. They have food and shelter and new friends, the Native Americans. The pilgrims decide to invite the Native Americans to a Thanksgiving feast. Massasoit promises to come. What a surprise! Massasoit arrives with, men, with 90 Native Americans. The pilgrims are worried. How can they feed so many people? But Massasoit knows what to do. He sends some men into the forest. They come back with five deer. Now there is enough for everyone to eat. The oldest pilgrim says a prayer of thanks. Then the feast begins. Everyone eats so much. Turkey, lobster, goose, deer meat, onions, pumpkins, cornbread, berries. The feast lasts for three days. People eat and sleep, then eat again. The Native Americans do special dances. The pilgrim men run races. They have shooting matches. The children play games like tag and blind man's bluff. Everyone has a wonderful time. As the years go by, more people from England come to America. The little town of Plymouth gets bigger and bigger. The children of the pilgrims grow up and have children of their own, and they have harvest feasts too. In 1863, Abraham Lincoln, the President of the United States of America, makes Thanksgiving Day a national holiday. 
The first Thanksgiving is never forgotten. I hope you learned some things about the first Thanksgiving. <laughs>